Hello everyone, welcome to my young and the restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Victor yells, Nikki, are you in there? At Newman Media. Within the office, Jack and Nikki remain silent. Victor turns to go. Jack snarls, I didn't miss the feeling at all, adding that it has been a while since he felt the urge to lurk. He would like to talk to Victor again about how he introduced himself as her new sponsor. When Nate discovers Devon at work, he asks to take a break. At the club, let me buy you a drink. It's the best bargain Devon has seen all day, he claims. Tucker approaches Audra at the GCAC and takes a seat at her table. He assumes he is receiving the upgraded apology when she places his drink on her tab. Admittedly, he wasn't expecting a response from her. She fishes to see what ideas he has. Is he really so attractive? Or did his pitch merely get under her skin? What could be appealing, according to Audra, is his offer to collaborate with him at Glissade. Tucker wonders why she changed her mind. You had had enough of me. Audra claims that she made the decision to quit Newman with immediate effect. She has no chance of moving up there. Tucker asks, you just realized this. With a playful expression, he senses that something had to have occurred. Is his offer still on the table, she queries. Tucker says that if she's being truthful, it might be. He gets the impression Audra is still with Newman Media. She was fired by Nikki. Audra, what did you do to lose your job? Audra brushes off his query, lamenting that it's not the nice conversation she had hoped for. As Nate enters, Tucker notices that she is observing him. He observes that they are staring at each other. It seems like there is a disagreement between you two, and it has to do with your quit of Newman Media. Devon approaches Nate at their table. You're not still friends with Audra, are you? He's still courteous to each other, but it's not really a friendship, according to Nate. After venting about her codependency and the terrible Tucker, he apologizes. Devin claims that months ago, he discovered the truth about his father. Nate continues by expressing his gratitude for their reconciliation, saying, Family is everything. Devin refuses to make amends with Tucker. He lies about everything that comes out of his mouth. Audra and Tucker joke around about her change of heart across the room. He claims that when he opened up to her previously, she shut him down. But now that she's left Newman Media, she's back, apparently filled with sorrow. She's been slyly staring at Nate from across the room the entire time. He is eager to discover the length of her con game. I understand you're itching to update me on your activities. What role does Nate play in it? Audra says she just enjoys staring at him and that he's attractive. He keeps looking over at you, Tucker muses. You and Nate are conspiring together. You're correct, Audra remarks. We are sharing a bed. Tucker lashes out. No, you're not. However, I don't really care if you are. He is aware that she is taking advantage of him, but to what extent? Audra would like to talk about his offer. Tucker will consider it. I'll see you around. He says hello to Devon and Nate as he passes. Gentlemen. Victor calls Nikki in her office and complains that the door was locked when he arrived. Nikki tells a false story about taking a walk to decompress. Victor notes how incredibly cold it is. If he still needs to see her, Nikki inquires. I'll head over to you. Jack tells her to just tell him when she disconnects him. Nikki is certain that Victor should remain unaware of his involvement. She begs him to honor her authority. Jack tells her to take things one day or minute at a time as they talk about her desire to drink. Nikki feels irritated. Weeks ago, she ought to have won this match. If Victor discovered that she was depending on Jack, she fears what he would do to her. He would suffer great harm. Jack instructs her to inhale. Although Nikki detests lying to her spouse, she must spare him. I'm capable of handling it, Jack says, okay, surprising her. When he tells her that he was in the pub with Victor when she called, she expresses gratitude to him, but loses her cool once more. You're not supposed to do that at all. Jack has ironed Nikki by going out of his way to question Victor. Jack was attempting to measure his current state of mind. 
Nikki, no worries. He's experienced at extracting information from that man, and he told him that he might even accept him as her sponsor because he loves her so much. Nikki won't allow him to have any knowledge of this. They argue, but Nikki won't give up. She wants help from someone who can relate to her, but she can't let Victor realize what a mess she is. I'm your guy, Jack agrees. As Nick enters the office and asks if Victor would like to have a drink, Victor is still thinking about Nikki. Victor announces that he and his mother are eating dinner. How is she doing, Nick asks. Victor believes she's acting more powerful than she actually is. I find it objectionable that Jack Abbott is surveilling people. He talks to Nick about how he approached the bar and asked questions. He is unsure about his knowledge. Jack is someone Nick doesn't think he needs to worry about because he respects Nikki's privacy and knows when to use discretion. It makes logical that he would be worried if he is aware of her alcohol consumption. They don't need his worry, and Nikki doesn't need his help, Victor moans. Nikki apologizes for worrying Nick by going for a walk earlier and joins him and Victor at the office. Nick remarks how cold it is outside. Nikki says she has a new sponsor, someone she thinks will work out great because they are stable and composed. Nick declines Victor's invitation to supper since he is returning home to Christian. Jack informs Diane at the Abbott residence that Nikki called and that Victor nearly discovered them in the locked office. He detests the agreement he made. Diane inquires about her well-being. Not well, Jack replies. I'm concerned for her. He had previously witnessed Nikki engage in combat. She is exerting every effort to give the impression that she is in charge. Diane fears that he shouldn't take on this task at this time. Jack reassures her that she needs not worry. He's itching for some dancing and champagne. That sounds ideal to Diane. Sharon is conducting an online staff meeting from the patio of Crimson Lights. Nick observes with admiration. She gives them an assignment before signing off. Nick says, wow. As he approaches, you're great. What he finds so fantastic, Sharon wonders. She is tearing it up at Cassidy, Nick informs her. They talk about her employing younger people. Nick believes that having her as a mentor is a blessing. He is in awe of her ability to handle this while maintaining the coffee shop. According to Sharon, she's leaned on Esther and finds it difficult to let go. She expresses gratitude to him for pointing out that she's constantly juggling balls. Nick is aware that she will keep killing it. What's going on with him? asks Sharon. Well, I'm boring in comparison, Nick jokes. When she notices he is reluctant to discuss himself, she inquires about Nikki. Victor tells Nikki at society that he spoke with Jack earlier at the bar. She's hoping he was polite. Victor claims he questioned him. He was aware of both her drinking and her kidnapping. Nikki didn't want to keep her current circumstances from those that matter to her. She talks about it and feels stronger as a result. Victor would prefer that these issues stay within the family. Nikki claims it's part of her healing. Jack is not trusted by Victor. He is asked not to overinterpret the situation by Nikki. Devin continues to tell Nate at the GCAC that Tucker is a liar. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.